Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mr. Chairman, Metropolitan Chief Executive, Chiefs, Zongo Chiefs of Takradi, the Imams, fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, each time there is an opportunity to have this type of gathering, there is something that we must bring out for people to understand what zakat and sarakat transfer is all about. I want my brothers and sisters in Islam to live here understanding what they have just come to witness. To know that zakat and sarakat transfer is not a creation of the figurement, the imagination of members of parliament or officers of parliament. Zakat and Sarakat Trust Fund is a calling to each and every single Muslim who truly believes in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, it is the most neglected as far as Islam is concerned. Of all the five pillars of Islam, it is the most neglected. And I'm not the one who is telling you that it is the most neglected. I'm going to share something with you, hoping that Allah will be a witness. You will be a witness to me that this message has been delivered to you too. So that when, you, when we are asked whether you heard it or you didn't hear it, you wouldn't have, you would have any excuse to say that you didn't hear it. It is a conversation that um, I hardly want to do, but for the sake of this gathering, please just bear with me for two minutes to enable members to understand. For whoever is a Muslim here, understand what it means to have seen the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream. I'm just sharing with you the birth of zakat and sarakat as fan of Ghana. I had a dream in which I was leading people in prayer. And as soon as we finished with the prayer, I raised my hand to make supplication as we normally do in our mocks. And I heard somebody groaning in front of me. And a voice spoke to me in the dream, the man lying before you groaning is your holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I turned around to inform the ma'amum the people I was leading in prayer, that it is a holy prophet who was lying on something that was in the form of um, a pulpit. And we all ran towards him. We just stopped the prayer. And when, by the time we got to him, Allah, this was how the hand did. And we all stopped abruptly. Because, and you could feel the, the power around that indeed we were too dirty and could not be closer to him. And I said, Ya Rasulullah, what is it that is worrying you that you are in this state and you don't want us to come to your aid? And he said, I am in this state because you people have put me in this state. And I said, what did we do that was wrong? And he said, you have refused to observe zakat because of that fellow brothers and sisters in Islam are suffering. And their pain is my pain, the poor, the needy. It is this pain that I am feeling. That is the groaning that you heard from me. A gentleman among the congregation raised his hand and said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah. In fact, he spoke. Sir. I'm talking about a dream that little became like a reality. He said, I never cast him about the second day, but he's even. If I spoke in the typical Zongo way, the prophet was lying. He, he, he managed to raise his body up, even with the pain, and pointed at him and said that each and every one of you must observe it. He didn't give an exception. He didn't look at our faces to see who among us had it or didn't have it. 
and he said it in pain. Wallahi, as he was going back to lie down again, it was just three words that came. Ummati az-zakat. Ummati az-zakat. Ummati az-zakat. I, I got up from the dream, Wallahi, with my two eyes open, and I heard that voice echoing away. I thought, oh, I, I'm just a, a, a clerk in parliament, it was not our responsibility. I looked for all the important imams that I knew in Accra to share this dream. Why? Because our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us in his hadith, for whoever sees me in his dream has surely seen me. For Satan cannot take my likeness. Satan cannot imitate me. And I really believe in that dream because Satan is not interested in us paying zakat. In fact, he's happy we are not paying. So that we continue to be poor, we continue to be ignorant, and we continue to be swallowed by disease. But that is the only time that will make Satan happy. Definitely our Prophet Muhammad cannot be happy with a community that he said he was sent to the community with the knowledge of the pen. But that was his first revelation. Allah who teaches by the use of what? Pen. And today for Muslims to be lacking the pen. Instead of being leaders in every community, we suddenly became those who are standing at the back. I share this dream with well-meaning Muslims and people like Brother Dr. Zach at the research department and members of parliament and this dream, the question was then what do we do? What do we do? And indeed I remember I didn't want to go a, a long tail. The day this dream was to manifest, we were in public to receive a message that Sheikh Mustafa Icodes was bringing some dates during Ramadan to give to us. And indeed, being the secretary to the Muslim caucus, in addition to my work as the clerk to the Public Accounts Committee, I quickly gathered the Muslims. And we came, and they came with video and everything, and with Icodes banner to record us for receiving the date. And after taking the date, I took my box to my office, put it on my table, and something just struck me. Look at the box and see what is written on it. Brothers and sisters in Islam, when I, when I look at the writing on it, it was coming from the Sakat house of Kuwait. I was shaken. Wallahi, if this food was from Zakat, I was not qualified to take it. It was meant for the poor. It was meant for the needy. Fortunately, it was time for Zohar prayer. We went out there. We have a small veranda where we used to pray, members of parliament and staff together. And the Imam who usually lead us in prayer somehow was not there. And everybody turned out to me and said, Oh, then lead us in the prayer. Zalika Tahawil. <laughs> Look at what Allah did. This was the manifestation of my dream. Because I was troubled. They didn't know that. Even as I was in the mosque, I wasn't thinking even about the prayer. I was thinking about what honorable members of parliament, people who can buy a circulator full of debt, had come to receive to go and eat. And I led the prayer. It was Zohar prayer. When we finished, I turned back to look at, uh, face them and they thought it was usual the uh, adua. And, and I said, Honorable Members of Parliament, Wallahi, Allah has raised us higher in our society and make us the best of and the chosen ones from our community. But today, Allah has reduced us to the lowest of the low because we have failed to live up to our responsibility. I remember, Honorable Malik al Yaku was then the chairman of the Muslim caucus. He was there. And they said, oh, what are you talking about? And I said, have you all looked at the box that we have just received from Iconis? And like, oh, no, no, everybody was interested in the day. They, they don't even know where it is coming from. 
and I said, it is coming from the Zakat house of Kuwait. And if there's any one of us here who thinks he's qualified to take Zakat, he should raise his hand. And nobody could do that. And I said, today I will share with you a dream I've had about four years ago. That was in 2008, and this dream I had it in 2004. And after I shared the dream with them, I said, after that dream, I have been paying my Zakat. But anytime I'm about to pay Zakat, something prompts me that in that prayer, you were not alone. You were leading people. Why have you left them behind? Was observing it alone. And I shared the dream with them. Indeed, somebody raised his hand. If for the benefit of this girl, I will mention the name. One of Muhammad Ayaraga raised his hand at the back. So, oh, Mr. said this is uh, Zakat thing. They say oh, one year, you have to put the people who can save money. I, I will not forget this. That was before he even lost his seat again later. And I asked him, Honorable, when you took your appointment letter as a member of parliament, did you see your appointment letter? And he said he saw his appointment letter. And I asked, did you see your annual salary? And he said he saw his annual salary. And I said, if the one who engaged you was to give this money to you, put it down and gather it and give it to you at the end of the year, Will that money have gotten zakat or not? He said it will have attracted zakat. And I said, but because the person who employed you knows that he cannot wait at the end of the year before giving you because you would have died of hunger. He has divided that money into 12. And he's giving you monthly salary. But when you take it in a month, you consume everything. And consume everything up to 12 months, including the one that belongs to the poor and the needy. There is the possibility for even the salary worker. If you consider your annual income as your annual earning, and stop our old definition of annual savings. I don't know where that word savings came from in the Quran. From that moment, the top of annual savings changed to annual earning. And we made it compulsory upon ourselves and, and did what was noble. All that we were asked to find out, is it possible that our salary is up to the NISAB? Yes, we went to the P PMMC, the Precious Mineral Marketing Company, to find out what was the value of 94 grams of gold. Our, our city has gold equivalent. And when we found out 94 grams of gold, it was 1,178 cities. That's for this convention, the re uh, revaluation of our city. And when we checked, almost everybody, including even the watchman in parliament, was qualified to pay zakat. Except one thing who was a laborer. And we stood on the grounds of Sharia and we excused him. And we did the pilot for two years in parliament alone. And two years, when we called people and said, this is the amount of money we have in our... Everybody said, are you sure or are you lying? How could, how could that money be possible? Because it is from the point something something on top of the salary that is being taken. Because we also divided the annual zakat into, uh, that you take from your annual earning into 12. So that you will pay it from your monthly without feeling the pinch. So please, this is the message Haji has brought to you this afternoon. It is nothing new. In fact, just recently when we met uh, a delegation that came all the way from... Um, uh, 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 well, Zakat Forum, we got to know that even in, in, in uh, Indonesia, as soon as your, your, your salary is Zakat uh, uh, Nisab, in fact, the government deducts it as source and, and make it available to the poor and the needy. Please, this is my message to you. This message is coming from the Board of Trustees. We have registered this institution. And we have put credible people in this institution. You see that we have allowed these institutions to be led by finance people and not by imams and because it is about money. Put money in the hands of people who understand money. I know quite a long time when we form committees in our mobs, we will just look for people who don't even understand how to keep money. And we won't ask who are the finance people, who are the account people. 
So don't be surprised to see Mr. Alas and them to be the chairman of the board of trustees. Don't be surprised to see Aja Azara, who is a, a former banker and still a banker for this in a gym. Yeah, when, we, when you come to our board meeting, you see the struggle between the bankers and those who know how to let the money be spent. Yes, because, and I always tell people, if you address our back, ourselves to the history of Zakat, when the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself established Zakat, Beit al-Mal, the first person appointed to be in charge of Beit al-Mal during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet Muhammad was Abu Safiyan. Who was Abu Safiyan? He was a merchant. Who was Abu Safiyan? He was somebody who knew to manage the resources of the people of Mecca. He was looking for people who know so much how to read the Hadith, he would look for Ali, Umar and those people. He didn't do that. He put it in the hand of somebody who understood it. So please, our money is, our money is safe and let us be sure that nobody and that's and this particular uh, zakat fund is not about any sect that's why i'm happy it, it, it is sad that uh, Sheikh salman and others will not be here with us Sheikh salman is representing the uh, uh, the sunnah community and we have uh, Sheikh huzema representing the national chief imam and also the tijaniya community and we have Sheikh badakul representing the uh, shia community indeed we have she will have represented Ahmadiyya Muslim mission because poverty does not know Ahmadiyya. Poverty does not know Sunnah. Ignorance does not know Sh Shia. When it hit us in our community, we all suffer together. So with this, I just want to end this and let us know that I have delivered the message. And please take the message from us and carry the message ahead. And I know my conscience is free. And IGF's conscience is free, let our conscience also be free. Whatever it is, wherever we go, let the message of the Holy Prophet Muhammad be conveyed. Because he said he's worried and he's in pain because we refuse. There was a place I said this and I had to carry the Quran on my head to say that I actually had this dream. Allah. And may Allah accept our prayer and we pray that God should continue to bless Mr. Jamal who has willingly and freely make this accommodation available free of charge to the Zakat and Saraka Trust Fund of Ghana at his part of his contribution towards the promotion of Islam. Zakat Board of Trustees are very grateful to uh, Mr. Jamal and the family. May Allah continue to bless their wealth. Whatever it is that they will have been making out of this building that they have decided to give to Allah, may Allah replenish them. And the chiefs who are here to we pray to Almighty Allah to continue to strengthen you in good health, that you continue to provide support to Islam. Mr. Metropolitan Chief Executive, I'm not summarizing. We thank you so much for finding it uh, um, important to join the Muslim community today. And thank you to our chiefs. May Allah bless us and may Allah let the Zakat fund grow so that one day we will point it up to the Zakat House of Ghana, just like what we have in Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum. I hope I can. Thank you very much. All praises to Allah. All praises to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All praises to Allah. All praises to Allah.